Hi, welcome to lesson six of game zero and today we're going to be doing collision detection and adding text. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go into project, add a new item and we're going to add a font. Now I'm just going to call mine main font and just press add. There we go, we can now see it over on this side of the screen and we've got a whole bunch of XML code just there. So if you want to change the type and the size of font, this is the page you would do it in. So for example, there's the size, there's the font it's going to use. I'm just going to leave mine as the default for now. So back into our game code. Okay, so what we're going to create is our is a sprite font and we're just going to call it font. Clever, eh? And then what we're now going to do is create a score, because what we're going to write on the screen is, of course, the score. We're going to create a data type called score, and this is an integer. If you're not sure what an integer is, an integer is a whole number, so one, two, three, so no decimal points, no fractions. Okay, we're now going to load our font, because right now it's still there. We've created somewhere to keep it, and we've loaded it, but it's not actually part of the program, just like with the graphics. So I'm just going to scroll down again to this part of the code and I'm going to then load our font. I don't need that anymore. So there we go, font, so content load, our main font coming from there. So we could load quite a few fonts if we wanted different types of writing on the screen. I'm just going to come straight down into my draw function and after I've drawn everything else I'm going to draw the score. Slight difference before in which we use something called a draw string. So we go sprite batch dot draw string. So that's the font we've just created. This is the word we're writing, and then we're adding score. So that's the variable we've just created. And we're going to put that 20 pixels in, 10 pixels down. Let's see if we can see that. There we go, score zero, because right now we're not telling it how to gain points. Okay, this is where it gets a little more interesting. We're going to have to create collision detection. So we need to check if our UFO and our asteroid are in the same position on screen. I'm just going to pop up Photoshop. So we've got our asteroid, which is actually still inside the square box. This top left corner is the asteroid X and asteroid Y, so that's where the coordinates start. And this bottom right corner is the X plus the width and the Y plus the height. So what I'm going to do is check if our X and Y position of the middle of the UFO is anywhere inside the box that holds the asteroid. Well, that sounds a lot, but it's not that complicated, honest. Okay, so for that we need to go into our update function. And we're going to check if it's actually hitting each other. But the first thing we're going to do is get the middle point of our UFO, because just like with the asteroid, the UFO is also the top left corner and we actually want to find the middle of it. So here we go, getting the midpoint of the UFO. So the X is equivalent to the X position plus half the width, so that'll just get the middle point on the horizontal. Then same again, Y is the middle of UFO Y plus half of the height. Now I've just put the word into the at the beginning because at the moment these are decimal point numbers and I want to convert them to just be whole numbers. So this converts a floating point number to just a whole number. Okay, so now I've got the X and Y. I can now check. And what I'm going to do then is just say if X, so this little X just here, oops, why have we over there? Let's just tab that in, keep it nice and neat. So if X is greater than the asteroid X and the X position is less than the position of the asteroid plus its width, that it must be somewhere between the left and right of our asteroid. Now we're going to do a nested if statement, which is where we have two if statements, one after the other. It's now going to check the same for the y. Just finish my bracket so I don't forget later. If the y of our UFO is greater than the y of the asteroid, and the y is less than the asteroid y plus its height, it must be somewhere inside this box. So it's first checked left to right, then it's checked up and down. If both of those are true, then it's going to get 
into this bit of code just here. In which case, all I'm going to do for now is reset the score. So if you do get hit by an asteroid, this just keeps things very simple for now. Oh, I've made a mistake. Draw with copy and pasting. So all it's going to do is that if you do get hit by an asteroid, your score becomes zero. So there's no end of game just yet. What I'm now going to do is go, just go into our update of the asteroid code a little bit. Now I'm just going to say, if the asteroid does get to the bottom of the screen, that means you've managed to successfully avoid the asteroid, we're going to add 10 points to our score. Now if I press play, score zero, oh no points there, there we go, 10 points. 20 points. Okay, that's a bit easy, but now if I force myself to hit it, there we go, scores become zero. Of course, later on in the game, what we'll do is sort of reset the asteroid, cause an explosion scene with anything like that to make it end properly. Just before we do go off, what this is called is bounding box collision, where all we're checking is to see whether these two rectangles intersect or see whether they overlap. Um, the better way is actually to check pixel by pixel if they overlap, but that becomes a lot more complicated. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll be looking at arrays and loops, which means if we want to create a hundred asteroids or a thousand asteroids, we can do it very, very easily. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you.